Hi there, it's Ed. Thank you for tuning in to another Solo Traveler RPG video. This is Episode 3 of The Adventures of Anselm. Last time, as you recall, Anselm had made it to the system of Tacalon, and after a slight altercation with a modular cutter, he had arrived at the orbital starport of Tacalon. Now, he had come to Tacalon to try to find some information about his father Godfrey. His father Godfrey, who had escaped from the prison planet of Vilmork. Godfrey had left under mysterious circumstances when Anselm was only about eight years old, and Anselm had not seen him for about 30 years. So he went to Tacalon to see if he could get some news report about his father escaping from the uh, prison planet. And he did. He did see a news report that Godfrey, along with two other individuals, that's why I'm doing three, <laughs> two other individuals, three in total, uh, had escaped from Vilmork. And he did see a picture of his father 30 years older than the last time Anselm had seen him. Now, Anselm knew that Godfrey had been an official with the imperial government, but he didn't know exactly what role Godfrey had, and Anselm thought the best place to find out that information would be the next system over, Zerasia, which is the sub-sector capital. And speaking of capital, <laughs> Anselm realized that he needed some money. He was getting a little low on funds, so he decided to find a patron, and he did, Simon the Diplomat, who needed transport to Zerasia and was rather insistent that happened very quickly. So Anselm did load up himself and Simon and headed to the jump point away from Tacalon. However, on the way to the jump point, they were sent upon by a merchant ship, not just a merchant ship, but a merchant ship that opened fire on them, saying that Simon would never reach Zerasia alive. And that is where we rejoin our mighty hero. Now, this is going to be space combat, but very one-sided space combat because Anselm has no weapons on his ship. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even have a turret anymore. He got sheared off when he ran into the modular cutter. So Anselm is going to try to get away before the merchant can blast them, before they can get to the jump point. Um, I originally was going to use the space combat system from the Traveler book because my whole point of doing this was to play as many of the systems and as much of the Traveler classic rules as I could. So I read the combat rules in the Traveler book and actually found some videos and did a little studying and figuring out how exactly that would go about. And I discovered something. I discovered I did not want to use the classic Traveler space combat rules for a few reasons. First of all, Traveler being a bit more hard sci-fi, you had to worry about vectors and possible Grav gravitational pull of planets and other heavenly bodies and a lot of things like that that I honestly wasn't that interested in. Um, Traveler Space Combat gets very miniature tactical combat, which is not 100% what I'm looking for. So instead, I decided to use the Cepheus Light Upgraded Rules. That uh, combat system, the Space Combat system, is much more abstract and uh, less about measuring out millimeters and converting that or that standing for kilometers or thousands and hundred thousands of kilometers. So I'm going to use those rules to do the space combat between Anselm and this merchant ship. Um, speaking of which, I have never named Anselm ship. So I'm going to take a moment and do that right now. So I won't, won't continue to call it Anselm ship. Ah, so Anselm ship is the ISS Raven. Ooh, fancy. So that is the name of Anselm ship, the ISS Raven. And the ship that is attacking them is the uh, the Anastasia. Merchant ship Anastasia is the attacker in this situation. Now, the Cepheus Light upgraded rules are extremely compatible with the classic traveler rules. They're kind of made to be that way, uh, very much a more modern take on the classic rules. So I've had to do just a very small amount of conversion to work out the combat with Cepheus Light using the old uh, traveler stuff or making them mesh together, but it's been extremely easy. A couple of things I needed to do. I have printed out the stats for the scout ship and the subsidized merchant from the Cepheus Light, so I'm going to be using those stats rather than the ones in the Traveler book. And Cepheus Light uses dice modifiers based on your ability scores, your stats. And since Anselm has such a low dexterity, he's going to have a minus one. And a lot of the piloting things he's going to need to do will require his dexterity. So he's going to have a minus one to all those things, which is not great, but it is what it is. The first thing I actually want to do before I start the space combat is find out where is this taking place within the Tacalon system. In Classic Traveler, there is what we call a safe jump point. You have to be a certain distance from a planet 
to safely execute a jump. If you're within 100 planetary diameters, there is a modifier to see if you miss jump or even if your ship, ship is destroyed when you try to instigate your jump. And if you're within 10 planetary diameters, that modifier goes way up. I think it's plus 5 for within 100 planetary diameters and plus 10 if you're within 10 planetary diameters. Um, and I'm going to ask a mythic question to see where's this taking place. Is it within the 10? Is it within the 100? I think it's going to be within the 100, but I will roll mythic to find out exactly where it's going to take place. Luckily, there is a chart in the Traveler book that tells us how far do you need to be to be to the safe jump point. And it's based on the size of the planet. And Tacalon is size A. So as we would say around here, it's a big one. So luckily we do have this uh, handy little chart here. It'll tell you what is the safe distance. How long will it take you to get to the safe distance of 100 planetary, t 100 planetary diameters away from the ship? So we go down this way. Uh, since Tacalon is a size A world, we go across. Anselm's ship is a 2G maneuver. So I believe that's going to be, what is it, 294 minutes, does that say? So just about three hours, not three hours, five hours, just about five hours to get to a spot where it is the safest to instigate a jump, to start the uh, jump to the next planet. Oh, by the way, that was page 54 in the Classic Traveler book. I had somebody that was happy that I was giving out page numbers, so I wanted to remember to do that. Also, somebody else mentioned, and I, I saw this in the Traveler book, in the charts, in the tables, that... Anselm actually has a minus two for a missed jump because he's in a scout ship. So thank you for reminding, him, reminding me of that. That's a big help as well. So my mythic question is, are they within 10 planetary diameters when this attack is taking place? Um, I'm going to say that's very unlikely. I don't think that the merchant ship would attack within 10 planetary diameters because I feel like there's a lot more traffic and it would be a lot more visible for them to make an attack that close to tackle line. But I'm going to roll. We're going to roll 2d10 with a 6 chaos factor. Very unlikely is still a 45% chance that, yes, they're within 10 planetary diameters. So let's see what we get here. 45 or less, yes, it is within 10 planetary diameters. A 0, 7. <laughs> yes, yes it is. They don't care who sees them. They don't care if anybody notices what they're doing and able to report this happening. They're attacking. They want to make blame sure my southern just came out. Blame sure that Simon does not make it to Zerasia. So yes, they do attack within 10 planetary diameters, which means it's very unlikely Anselm will be able to instigate a jump, an emergency jump, to get away from the situation. That's going to change his tactics quite a bit, quite a bit. As I said, the Cepheus system uses positioning, so it's a little more abstract. You don't need to worry about miniatures and positioning on a table and drawing out vectors and those things like that. However, I did want a little bit of a representation of where the ships were. So I'm going to use these. These are a couple of models from the Rocket Men game put out by WizKids Games a few years ago, and I just thought they are cool. So I'll use those to kind of give an idea of where the ships are during this uh, quasi-space combat. In Cepheus Light, the first thing you do is determine position. Uh, there is no initiative or anything like that. It's position. Are you in a good position, bad position in relation to the people that are attacking you? You determine position by rolling one dice plus a piloting skill plus your dexterity dice modifier plus the ship's current maneuver drive thrust number. Um, since Anselm has a piloting of one but a dexterity modifier of minus one that cancels each other out so he's at zero. However, his scout ship does have a maneuver drive thrust number of two. So at this moment, we would roll one dice, add two. That would be the roll for Anselm's position. And oh, I did write down some little uh, some little sheets with the crew's information on it. They do have a pilot. Their pilot has a dexterity of A, which gives him a plus one. So his piloting skill of one plus a plus one dexterity modifier is two. But the merchant ship only has a maneuver drive thrust number of one. So the merchant ship has a plus three to their positioning. Anselm has a plus two. So let's see who gets position for this first round of space combat. Space combat! And I'm going to roll at the same time, and we're going to have the, uh, the red dice for Anselm and the green dice for the merchant ship. Let's see what happens. Who is going to get position? Oh, and it looks like Anselm will have position, which is a great thing for Anselm. 6 plus 2 is going to be 8, 2 plus, 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. So depending upon your position, you can have dice modifiers for your attack modifiers, for your attack throws. 
Uh, not really anything else, but just for your attack throws. So that will be good for Anselm because he gets a zero dice modifier to attack the ship, which he won't do because he has no has no weapons. But for the merchant ship to attack him, he will. They will have. Um, let's see. They will have a minus three to attack him. So that's great for Anselm for this first round of space combat. Whoever has position in space combat gets to determine whether they go first or second in the round, and Anselm is going to go first, <laughs> trying to get away. Uh, there are several different roles or stations you can fulfill during space combat in the Cepheus Light upgraded rules. So there is Captain, Pilot, Sensor Operator, Gunner, and Engineer. The thing about Anselm is he's the only person on his ship. Well, not actually, that's not true. Simon is there as well. So... We will have something happen with Simon here in a minute. Uh, but, yeah, each one of those positions, each one of those roles, each one of those stations can only be manned by one person, or only one person can man a station. So Anselm cannot take a captain action and an engineer action. He has to decide which of those stations, which of those roles, is he going to fulfill during his turn. As a matter of fact, when they take off from Tackleon and everything's going fine, suddenly when there is a beam laser that goes by them, <laughs> Simon does rush up to the bridge. What the devil is going on here? Anselm spins around in his captain's chair, in his pilot's chair, and says, Apparently there are some acquaintances of yours here that are not terribly uh, keen on you getting to Zerasia. I think maybe you left out a couple of things that might have been important for me to know. Ah, uh, yes, well, I'd hoped it, this wouldn't happen, but... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I think we have a lot to talk about here in a moment. For right now, you want to sit down to give me a hand? So Simon does rush in, sits down at one of the stations, and now we have Simon to fulfill one of those roles on the on the ISS Raven. Uh, so yes, he will be able to do those. So like I say, there's captain, pilot, sensor operator, gunner, and engineer. And right now, since Anselm has position, he's going to go first. Because one of the things he can do as a pilot is he can try to disengage. That means he is able to get away from combat, leave combat, and, and not even have to participate. And that is definitely what Anselm wants to do. So it is going to be a piloting role. Piloting plus his dex modifier. And so a posed roll versus the other pilot plus his dex modifier. So basically 2d6 plus Anselm's zero and a 2d6 plus the other pilot's uh, plus two. So yeah, they have a plus two because he has a one for piloting skill and a one for his dexterity modifier. So that's what we got. So let's see who can, can Anselm get away. That is what Anselm's going to try to do. All right. So, 2d6 plus 0, that is an 8. Not too bad. So, Anselm, let me use my little miniatures here to kind of represent what is happening. The merchant ship has fallen in behind Anselm. Anselm is trying everything he can. Now, Anselm realizes that his scout ship is faster than the merchant ship. So, he isn't just going to try to outrun them, doing some fancy flying to try to not uh, make himself a very easy target. But he is trying to get away, just trying to... Uh, Put the throttle open, open the throttle wide up and just get away if he can. Can he do that? He has gotten an 8. So now 2d6 plus 2 for the pilot on the merchant ship. And oh no, 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 no. That's going to be a 10. Plus 2 is going to be 12. So no. Uh, he does some fancy flying. He does open up the throttle. However, he is not able to disengage from the merchant ship, which is not great. Um... Yeah. Now we have Simon. Simon can fulfill one of these roles, and Simon has a computer skill, which is handy. That means he could fulfill the role of sensor operator. Most of the actions they can perform use the computer skill. He also has jack-of-all-trades, oddly enough. Oh, I used a website that will randomly create, with the click of a button, a bunch of classic Traveler characters. I will put that in the description down below. You'll check that out. Really handy. I made all the crews, the crew members for the merchant ship and Simon using those just a couple of clicks. And believe it or not, I had to go through several of the characters that died in character creation. Who knew? Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. I think right now Simon um, is going to try to jam the sensors. He's going to use his uh, system operations... He's going to use the system operations action and his computer skill to jam the sensors on the other ship. So Simon turns on Simon. And some turns on Simon. He goes, jam their sensors, jam their sensors, you know, mess up their targeting. If we can stop them from shooting us, maybe we can get away and not be destroyed. Simon starts uh, flipping switches, typing in code, pushing lots of buttons. What can he do? 
Simon has a computer skill of two. So that's going to be a two plus his education. His education is a D, which is a plus two. So he's got a plus four to this. So this is actually isn't bad. It's composed computer role against any vessel, an enemy vessel modified by the ship's computer dice modifiers. Now I think that means the computer on his ship, the computer on their ship does not have a dice modifier. It's a, it's a nicer computer. So this is going to be for Simon. And that is 5 plus 4 is 9. Not a great roll, but we'll see what happens. The other computer, or the other sensor operator, the sensor op on the merchant ship has a computer of 1. Their education is A which is a plus one. So they have a plus two that are all. So can they do it? Can they do it? And, oh, seven plus two is nine. So it is a tie. So I'm going to say that's not successful. So yeah, he is typing all this, trying to jam the sensors on the merchant ship. However, he is unable to do it. It gives a negative modifier of basically zero. So yeah, cannot jam the sensors. And now it is the merchant ship's turn. <laughs> this might be bad. Uh, on that ship, one of the reasons why you want more people on a ship is because each one of them can fulfill one of those roles I was mentioning earlier. So they have a pilot who could also be the captain. They have a gunner, they have an engineer, and they have a sensor operator. And each one of those can take a turn. So let's see what happens. The captain slash pilot is going to try to create an attack vector, which means he's going to sort of get in the best attack position to give them the best opportunity or the best angle to get a shot on Anselm's ship. He's going to have to roll piloting plus his decks and eight or more, and he gets to apply the effect to any single weapons attack throw for this round. Now, effect in Cepheus rules, uh, whatever you roll above your target number is effect. So he has an eight or better. So if he rolls like a 10, he'd get a plus two dice modifier. Try to offset some of that bad positioning negative dice modifier they have right now. So let's see, can he do that? It's going to be 2d6 plus his piloting of one, his decks of one. So... 2d6 plus 2, can he get on a good attack vector for Anselm's ship? Let's see, that is going to be a 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7. No, no, Anselm, even though he is not able to get away and disengage from this combat, he is not caught napping, and he does. Let's go to the models. Let's go to the models there, Jim. Uh, yeah, he is able to bob and weave and spin around. This individual is trying to come in on them, trying to get them. However, Anselm quickly gets back and forth zigzaggy, and they are not able to get a great attack vector on them, which is great for Anselm. They still have a minus three modifier if they're going to try to shoot him. Uh, we do have our we do have our sensor operator. They are going to do a uh, an action called target systems. They can lock onto a specific part of Anselm's ship when the gunner fires to hopefully damage that part and not anything else. And they're going to target the systems. They're going to try to target the maneuver drive to slow it down because they do know that the scout ship could outrun them because it is a much faster ship. So they're going to try to do that. The sensor operator has to throw their computer and their computer skill is a one. Uh, with their education, their education is a, which gives us a plus one modifier. So we're at plus two. But we're also modified by their their uh, ship's computer dice modifier, and the dice modifier for a subsidized merchant in Cepheus Light Rules is a minus two, which takes out their entire bonus. So let's see, two D6, they have to roll a 10 or more. Can they do it to target a specific system on Anselm ship? And uh, four plus two is six, no, they cannot. They cannot target a specific spot of the ship. So again, Anselm trying to do everything he can to make himself less of a target for this for this merchant ship that is attacking them. Um, then we have the engineer actions. Damage control, overcharge, ooh, overcharge weapons? Ooh, uh, that would make, you know what, I'm gonna say not right now, but I, what I am gonna do, the engineer can redline the engines, which means, I'm giving it all that you got, Captain. Uh, he can increase the output of the engines, which means when we roll for position next time, they will get uh, plus one to their thrust rating, which would help them stay with Anselm. So that's what he's going to try to do. He has an engineering skill of one and his education skill for this guy is also a plus one. So that's going to be a plus two. He's rolling 2d6 plus two, trying to get an eight or more. Can he do it? 
That is, oh yes, 11, 11 plus 2, that is going to be 13. Yes, he does redline the engines. He cranks up the output, they flood the batteries, the engine, the drive with power, so they do get a plus 1 for the position roll. Uh, now, now it is the gunner's turn. And the gunner is going to take the shoot action, as you might imagine. He is going to fire the single beam laser. I decided that uh, they have a single beam laser, and if you think I'm doing that just to try to give Anselm a little bit of an advantage, you are right, because I think he's going to need every single advantage he can have. Uh, does the gunner hit? He's got a minus three to whatever he rolls. So this is going to be gunnery plus his dexterity, uh, minus three. He has to roll an eight or better. His gunnery skill is a plus one. His dexterity gives him a plus one, so that's a plus two. Minus three, so he's actually at a minus one net right now. So 2d6 minus one, rolling an eight or better to see if he does hit Anselm. He turns the turn around. He lines the beam laser up right with Anselm's ship and fires. Does he hit? Five minus one is a four. No, he does not hit. Ansem, at the last moment, does put his scout ship into a spin. And the beam goes harmlessly by. Off into the ether. Um, Anselm and Simon both wipe sweat from their brows. Now we go to another positioning roll and round two of space combat. So we do have the scout ship being pursued by the merchant ship, and Anselm and Simon are still alive and undamaged. But for how long? Let's go to round two and roll once again for position. Same thing, Anselm's the red dice, merchant is the green dice, plus two for Anselm, plus three for the merchant. Ah, no, plus four for the merchant because they did redline their engines, so they get a plus, an extra, uh, an extra plus one. So plus two, Anselm, plus three for, I'm sorry, plus four for the merchant. Oh, this doesn't look good. Uh, no, it's not. So we have a four for Anselm, and we have ugh, an eight for the merchant. So this time, despite Anselm's best efforts, the merchant ship does fall in right behind them in a perfect position for the turret to spin around and have them in their sights. So they are four positions higher than Anselm, which actually means they get a zero. So they have no modifiers to their attack rolls this turn. And they get to decide if they go first or second in the round, and they are going to go first, as you might imagine. Uh, so again, the pilot will try to create a, an attack vector to get them a bonus. That is, again, going to be a plus two. And what do we have here? Oh yeah, easily he gets, again, they are right behind. They are on Anselm's tail, almost in the perfect position to fire upon them. That is going to give them a an effect. So he had to roll an 8 or more. Ooh, ooh dear. Okay, he rolled 11 plus 2 is 13. Uh, oh, oh yes. So he gets a bonus equal to the effect. So like I said, every point above what they need gives them a point of effect. Uh, he rolled a 13, he did an 8, he has a plus 5. They have a plus 5 to hit Anselm. Oh heavens, alright, so that is what he's going to do. Uh, we are going to have, again, the sensor operator is going to try to target their maneuver drive. So again, that is a plus 2, minus 2 for this, the computer on the merchant ship. So a straight roll, 10 or more. Can they do it? Uh, no, uh, they're not able to target the maneuver drive, which is kind of good, I guess. Uh, we'll see exactly where they end up hitting when they shoot. If they hit, they may not hit at all. Uh, okay, then we have, we're going to go back to the engineer actions. You know, I I, uh, I feel like they would overcharge the weapon because they know they are in a prime position to hit Anselm's ship. And again, they don't want Simon to get away from them. They do not want him to get to Jurasia. Why is that? Hopefully we'll find out because uh, we'll have a chance and Anselm will survive. Let's see if that actually happens. But I believe he will overcharge the weapon, try to do more damage. That is going to be his engineering plus his education, which I believe we said is a plus two. Has to roll an eight or better. And if he does that, they get an extra hit when they fire, if they hit. So let's see what happens. This is going to be an eight or more. Six plus two is going to be eight. Yes, so he diverts all that extra power into this beam laser. It uh, the, the gauges... The, ga the power gauges, the power dials on the beam laser go boink, 
way up to 100%, maybe 110%, and now the gunner is going to take the shot. He lines up. Since they are right behind Anselm, he quickly dials in on their position. He gets ready. He presses the overcharge beam laser that they have. It goes arcing right towards Anselm, but does it hit? Let's find out. Again, that is going to be a plus two. They have a plus five to this, so a plus seven in total. They're pretty much going to hit. There's no way they cannot hit. So let's see what happens here. Um, all right, yeah, two, four, plus two is six, plus another seven is a 13. Oh, yeah, easily, easily they hit Anselm's ship with a massive overcharged beam laser. It does hit Hansel. The entire thing shakes. The raven rattles from the impact of the beam. And now we get to determine what sort of damage did it do. The scout ship is unarmored, and a beam laser is a light weapon. So there's a chart. We cross-reference those. That is on page 87 of the Cepheus Light Upgraded Rules. So with unarmored and a light weapon, that is rolling on the internal damage. And we have two rolls. We actually have two hits because they did overcharge their weapons. We have to roll on that twice. All right. What do we have? This is going to be two dice on the internal hits table. And what happens? That is going to be a six. And six is the maneuver drive. Oh, heavens. All right. And the second hit is on... That's an eight. The hold. All right. So the hold, the cargo hold is hit. Um, Anselm has no cargo. If he did, that means part of the cargo would be destroyed. So this massive beam hits. It spreads out through the entire ship. Part of it destroys. It goes through part of the hold and would have zapped some of the cargo that would have been there. However, there's nothing there. So really, it's an ineffectual hit. But they do hit the maneuver drive. And when they hit the maneuver drive, that means their maneuver drive drops by one. So instead of being two, it is now a one. Um, my. Okay, um, if they get hit in the maneuver drive again, they will be disabled. That is the merchant's turn for round two. Now it is Anselm's turn. Anselm, once again, he is going to use the pilot action. Oh, dear. Now they could try to do an emergency jump. However, like I said, they have a plus 10 because they are within 10 planetary diameters. Uh, and if they roll a 16 or more, they're just destroyed. Your ship is obliterated. If you roll a 13 to 13, 14, or 15, you just have a miss jump. But with a with a plus 10, and there are modifiers about trying to do a jump while you're in combat. So but with all those, I think we're almost to a 13 anyway. So we're not going to do that. He's not going to do that. He is going to try. He could try to disengage again. He can try evasive maneuvers, which would give them a negative dice modifier equal to Anselm's pilot skill for oncoming attacks. I think he's still going to try to disengage, though. Even though the maneuver drive is damaged, I think if he can, the best thing for him to do is to get away from uh, from this pursuing merchant ship. That's really the best option for him. So let's see. That again is piloting versus piloting. Um, and they're going to add their thrust rating. So a 2d6 plus 1 for Anselm. What do we have here? That is 5, 6, 7, 8. So Anselm has an 8. What about the pilot and the merchant ship. He has a plus two, plus three. So two dice plus three. Five plus three is an eight. So no. No, Anselm cannot get away. They, again, are right behind him. He is trying everything he can, but the ship is now moving very sluggishly. He can't do the very dramatic spins and barrel rolls and sort of sharp turns that he was doing before to try to stay away from the merchant ship. His, his ship is really, really damaged from that. Uh, and then, then Simon can help as well. Um, he could also try to use an engineer action and redline the engine, which would help for position next time. Uh, he could, again, try to jam the other ship sensors, which would give them a negative, a negative to attack, but that would be on the next turn. Actually, at this point, since we're going to go to position next, I think the best thing for, for Simon to do, he's going to try to redline their engines. He's going to flip some switches using his jack of all trades, which means zero, uh, but his education modifier of plus one. He's going to try to just pump out all the power he can, divert it to the engines, and try to help them get out of here if they can. And that will up their thrust, rate, uh, thrust, 
thrust training by one for everything, position, and if they try to do a disengage, it'll be back to a two, all those things. So it is it is going to be beneficial. So he's going to try that. Again, jack of all trades gives him an engineering of zero, but his education of one plus one gives him a 2d6 plus one, has to roll an eight or better. Can he do it? Oh, please, please. Yes! Yes, he can. All right, so that is going to give them one thrust rating. So they are back to two for the next round. And it is time for round three. So we are back to the original plus two for Anselm and plus three for the merchant ship. And uh, who's going to get positioned this time? Again, Anselm is the red dice. Merchant ship is the green dice. Who is going to gain position? Oh my. All right. So that's going to be definitely the, the merchant ship. Anselm has a three. They have a six. So because of the hit on the maneuver drive, even with the extra energy that Simon is able to root to the maneuver drive, it's not enough. It is, again, like flying through molasses, and the merchant ship can easily follow every single roll, spin, turn that Anselm is trying to put his scout ship through. Uh, oh, here's a question. Here's a question I want to ask if they survive this round. They are three... Their position is plus three more than Anselm's. They have three to the benefit. So that actually gives them a dice modifier of zero. So it doesn't help. So again, uh, they are getting a position where they can easily put them in their sights, in the gunner sights, to fire on them. And again, since they have position, they are going to elect to go first in this round. Uh, and pretty much the same thing that it is last time. The uh, Oh, you know, well, let's see. Let's see. Would they take a different? Would the pilot take a captain action? Now, you know, I think, again, they do want Simon to not reach Zerasia. So he's going to go to back to an attack vector, trying to give them all they can, all the advantages they can to stop the ship, possibly just to destroy the ship and kill both of them and not have to deal with this at all. But that, that is their goal. That is their goal. So nothing fancy. Attack until they can no longer continue. So he is going to try the attack vector again, a plus two to 2d6. And 7 plus 2. That's going to be a 9. So this time it's only a plus 1 effect. So they only get a plus 1 to their attack, which is good. Good. <laughs> it's better than a plus 3. So they are, again, not quite as good of an attack, attack vector. They're not exactly immediately behind Anselm. But, again, in a good position to uh, dial in the targeting program for the gunner to uh, get, a good, get a good bead on the ship. Let's go back to the sensor operator. The sensor operator will once again try to target the system, trying to target the maneuver drive, because if they hit it again, it will be disabled, and they're dead in the water. Anselm's ship, the ISS Raven, is immobile. So that is what they're going to try to do. Again, they have a uh, just a straight roll. So a 10 or more, can they do it? No. Again, trying to lock onto the system, they're not able to do it. And we will finally go to the engineer on the merchant ship, the Anastasia. And he is going to, they don't have to worry about damage control at all. Uh, could redline the engines, could overcharge the weapon. I'm going to say again, he's going to try to overcharge the weapon. So that is going to be a D8 plus 2. And again, he is able to do it. He does, again, all that extra energy, extra, extra energy they're creating with the engines. He routes it all to the beam laser for the gunner to take another shot at Anselm. This is going to be two hits if they hit, but they only have a plus one this time. So we do have uh, plus three in total. So 2D plus three, eight or more. And a hit. Yes, again, they come in. Another great attack vector as the pilot pulls them along sort of at an angle. So Anselm is there. The ship, the merchant ship is coming in on them just like this as the gunner opens fire and again the beam laser I do this it's not impact it's energy it hits and it sparks and arcs through the entire ship blowing out a few things so now we've once again got to roll for effect what is the damage this will be again two internal hits for Anselm's ship first hit is going to be a five, which is weapons. Oh, well, okay. That's actually okay because it'll hit where their turret was. So it does hit that. What little small bare metal that has been scraped and broken off uh, gets hit and explodes and uh, kind of chars and uh, it's gone. So yeah, it's going to take a lot to fix that. Let's hope we can find a scout, scout base pretty soon. Uh, what is the second hit? What does that do? Let's see, that is going to be a 7 and... Oh, that is a breach! That is a breach! Uh, again, the beam weapon hits, the energy goes through the ship, 
um, you do see spark coming out of where the turret was and the sparks from that turret actually combine with the energy that goes through the entire ship and there is a breach in the ship. <laughs> now, right now, both Anselm and Simon are on the bridge. The bridge is a separate component to be hit, so I'm going to say they are okay. I'm going to say the bridge is pressurized. It says if you're in a pressurized part of the ship, you don't take the damage. And it says the staterooms are pressurized. So I'm going to assume the bridge is as well, and like I say, since the bridge is a specific target damage hit component on this table, I'm going to say they're okay. But they can't leave the bridge right now. Uh, they are... Yes, it's basically open to the vacuum of space. You do hear the air and the atmosphere get sucked out into the void. Okay, okay. This isn't looking good for Anselm nor Simon. Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, again, we have we have Anselm flipping switches, trying everything he can, uh, flying everywhere he can, doing all the defense that he can. Does he gonna, is he going to try to disengage again? I mean, he's got still the... The plus one, if he can do that. So he's still at a plus two. He's going to try just because he does have that other option. And the, the red lining engines does gives you, a, gives you a plus one to your thrust, regardless of what you're rolling. So yes, that's what he's going to do right now. So again, same kind of thing. It's going to be the, um, the flat roll. Oh, you know, something I've been doing wrong. I haven't been adding their thrust rating. So Anselm actually gets a plus two to this, and they get a plus three, like for the position roll. So let's see what's going to happen. This is going to be a disengage. Can he get away? Not bad. That's 9 plus 2. So Anselm is at 9. And how about the merchant ship? That... Oh! No! He cannot get away. Even with the extra energy going to the maneuver drive, even with um, everything that Anselm is trying to do with his fancy flying, he just cannot get away with the breach of the hull, with the... Um, the damage to the maneuver drive, everything is going on, everything Anselm tries, this merchant ship is able to stay right with him and not not give up, not give him an opportunity to get away from them. Heavens above. All right, uh, let's see. Then it's going to be Simon. Now, Simon can actually try to use his engineering ability and do damage control. And if he does that, he could repair one of the pieces of damage. And I'm going to say right now, he really needs to repair the, the maneuver drive. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be at a severe disadvantage. Not like they're not already. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to try a repair roll. That's engineering plus his intelligence. Simon's intelligence is quite good, if I remember correctly. Uh, well, his intelligence is okay. It's okay. So it's going to be a uh, plus zero. Basically, Simon has a plus zero. So he's got to roll an eight or more. If he does this, he can repair one system. And since we've only taken one hit to the maneuver drive, one repair would mean it is up and going again. So Simon swivels over to the engineering station. He starts flipping switches, pushing buttons, typing in code, trying to reroute connections, change uh, couplings, and everything he could do to get the maneuver drive back online to actually operate in the manner it's supposed to. Can he do it? That is the question. Gots to roll, gots to? Gots to roll the net or more. He gots to. Can he do that eight or more, Simon? Yes, he can. So Simon is able to, by some miracle, push the right buttons, get the right things to happen, repair, reroute, whatever he does, they now have a plus two to their maneuver drive again, and that is the end of round three. Now, here's the thing that I was wondering. Um, we do know that on the way in, Simon had an altercation with a modular cutter because there was an unexpected debris field that appeared. Are they near that? Is that something that Anselm could potentially steer into? Much like a famous uh, scene from a famous film that you may be familiar with if you're a science fiction fan and you're about my age, or even if you're younger. Um, is, is that something they could do? I don't know. That's going to be a mythic role. So are they near that debris field? I am actually going to say it's very unlikely that they are near that debris field, which again gives them a 45% chance since we're at KS Factor 6. But very unlikely. Yeah, that's going to give them a 45% chance or less that yes, they are near that debris field. So let's see what we get. Oh. Yes. 
Yes, they are. It is not, no, it is not an extreme yes or an exceptional yes, but it is a yes. So they are near that debris field. So Anselm remembers where they are, sees it. He says to Simon, hang on, I'm going to try something. Might be a little risky. You're, you're not going to fly into that, are you? Yes. Yes, I am. Do you have any better ideas? We could continue what we're doing. I don't see it helping a lot. Yes, I, I take your point. Yes, uh, proceed. And Simon does grip the uh, the armrest of his chair a little more tightly as Anselm dives into this debris field. Oh dear. Uh, let's see what happens. Now we're up to round four. All right, once again, who has position? Uh, since Simon was able to repair the maneuver drive, Anselm is at a plus two again. So again, plus two to the plus three for the merchant ship. And... Oh, uh, still can't get it. So they're at a five. The merchant ship is at a nine. So they are four ahead. So again, the merchant ship does have position. And again, I, I just sort of see them continue the same thing. So we have the attack vector. You know, this is getting kind of... Uh, well, uh, let's see. He, if he found out that they were near that. Uh, they're going to do the same thing. And then Anselm will get a chance to see if he can fly into this debris field and potentially get out. I want to say that might give them all negative dice modifiers for their piloting roles, and maybe some for their gunnery roles. That's something I might have to think of. But first of all, let's see what to do. So attack vector for the pilot. That is going to be a 9 plus 2. So that is an 11. That gives them a plus 3 to their attack on Anselm's scout ship, the Raven. So that is a plus 3 for the attack. Uh, can the sensor operator trying to target the maneuver drive, can they do it? Uh, oh, this time they can. They are able to overcome the sluggishness of the merchant ship computer. They are able to zero in right on Anselm's maneuver drive, which may actually help them, uh, may help them so Anselm can't get into the debris field like he wants to. Uh, the engineer is once, once again going to try to overcharge the weapons. And a 7 plus his 2 is an 8. Yeah, he's able to do that. So, back to the gunner. Can the gunner hit? The gunner has a plus 2. They also have a plus 3, so plus 5 in total to hit Anselm. And 6 plus 5, 11. Yeah, easily. Two more hits on Anselm's ship. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, is this going to be the end of Anselm? This may be the end of the battle. We have a breach of the ship. Let's roll the two dice. That is a six for the first damage. That is the maneuver drive. And it's been hit twice because they did target the maneuver drive. The, the sensor operator was able to do that, and they hit it twice. So two massive hits, or one big overcharged hit from the beam laser. Boom! The entire maneuver drive sparks. It sputters. An explosion. Kaboom! Comes from the maneuver drive. Smoke trails through the void of space, and Anselm can feel the entire ship stop, start floating freely in space. He flips his switches. He is trying to get any kind of thrust he can, but they are absolutely dead in the water. Um, and they're floating, and the other the other people know it. The, the uh, merchant ship, slowly, at, at their leisure, comes and starts flying around, monitoring, checking out... Anselm ship, making sure that there are no signs, that this is not some sort of scout trick to per a per appear to be hurt, uh, and at the last moment, get away from them. So, much like an animal circling a wounded deer, circling their wounded prey, they do begin to circle around Anselm ship. Uh, it is not too long before they satisfy themselves that this is not a trick, and they do line up for the kill shot. Now, this group, these merchants, for whatever reason, do not want Simon to reach Zerasia. Uh, and if you remember when I rolled up Simon, his motivation, he wanted to plunder contraband. I kind of feel like they also want to plunder this contraband and are trying to prevent Simon from doing the exact same thing. Uh, so, Anselm is uh, doing everything he can to get the ship back online, but the maneuver drive is destroyed. The merchant ship is lining up for the kill shot. He can see that happening. Simon sees this happening as well, and Simon stands from his position in the bridge, walks over to Anselm and says, Open a communications channel. And Anselm, with a bit of a quizzical look, does so. They establish communications with the merchant ship. And uh, Simon says, Ren, I know you know what this item is. However, I know where 
it is. Become partners with me. Allow us to uh, continue on. You can come along, and then we both can share in the profits. Think about it, Ren. Just you and I, 50-50, between the two of us, and, of course, our various crews. That sounds like a much better deal for you, doesn't it? So, this Ren character, is he going to go for this? Is he going to go for whatever Simon is proposing? That's going to be a mythic question. Let's find out. We are at Chaos Factor 6. Um, I'm going to say that whatever it is is valuable enough, and uh, Ren, whoever he's speaking to in the merchant ship, is willing uh, yeah, whatever it is, is worth a lot of money, and having fewer ways to divide this, whoever else may be involved or think they're involved, uh, Ren is okay to cut them out to have more for Simon and himself. So let's see. I'm going to say that's somewhat likely with a cast factor of 6. That is 80% chance or less of a yes. A 16% chance of an exceptional yes. Let's see what we get. A 31. So not exceptional yes, but yes. Long, tense moments. Stretch out while no communication is happening between either ship. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, a voice says, Very well, Simon. Yes, I, I agree with your proposal. However, remember what happens to those who double-cross me. And that is where we will leave Anselm for today. What will happen with Anselm? Who is this Wren? What is the contraband over in the system of Zerasia? And why do both of them and potentially other people want it so much? We shall find out next time! Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I had a good time. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Please feel free to like this video if you did enjoy it. That's a big help for a small-time content producer like myself. You can subscribe and click the bell, of course. That will give you a notification when another one shop, uh, pops up. You know how YouTube works. Thank you so much for this, and I will see you next time with the adventures of Anselm.